Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answers at Solving in Practice. My name is Javier Romero and here we are going to do this exercise on conflict-driven no-good learning for answers at solving of the solving part of our course. And I like very much this exercise because this will allow you to put into practice all the knowledge that you have acquired in the solving part, but all this builds on the knowledge that you have acquired also from previous sections. So I think this is quite interesting for that reason. On the other hand, what this makes also is that this exercise is rather long. Hence, it makes sense that you just want to see a bit how I start with it and maybe you can scroll forward because this will take some time. But what I'm doing is I will be recording how I do it, taking into account that you can then move forward if you think you already have understood it. Nice. Then there's another thing that I want to tell you about this exercise, and it is that there is not a unique solution, because as we will see later on this part A on no good propagation, one can follow different paths. One can choose to propagate on literals in different orders. And depending on this order, then here we will derive a different conflict no good that will lead to a different assignment. So what I'm going to do here is to proceed in a way that is different than the solutions that you have in these exercise sheets, right? So at least you have two possible solutions. But if it may be the case that you have a solution that is not exactly the same as the one that I will be um, calculating now here. Good, now that said, let's go quickly to the slides that are relevant for this exercise. And I have them here on the solving part this section on conflict-driven no-good learning. And here, really, I will not go more into detail because all I have to tell you is that these two subsections, no-good propagation and conflict analysis, are the ones that are most relevant to it. And really, to do well the exercise, you should understand those completely. So if you have not read the slides, go and have a look at them. And of course, check the videos by Torsten where he explains all that very well. Nice. Then let's go back to here and start with the exercise. We are given a logic program P and then we have this table with an assignment A and the table is annotated with the decision level, the decision literals, the literals that are propagated and the no goods that are used for this propagation. Then our first task is to find a conflict no good doing no good propagation. Then once we finish, we have to derive a conflict no good with the first UIP method. And finally, we find the assignment of the algorithm after conflict analysis. Good, then what we will do, so I've written here this line to continue, and then our task after deciding this, the first thing is to no good propagate here. But before we start this exercise, it's a good idea to do two very simple things. The first one is to check in the program whether we have two rules with the same body. And here, these two rules have the same body. So let's just write this down here so that we remember that this body occurs twice. Because it will be handy then for counting or whatever. Now we know, for example, that if this body occurs twice, and then we have nine rules, there are eight different bodies. Good, then the other thing is that for no good propagation, um, what we would do is normally um, to build the completion no goods of this program and the loop no goods, and then do no good propagation using the no goods. And this is what we have done in other exercises of this solving part. Now, what happens here is that if we build the no goods and we do it like that, I think it would take us too much time. So what we are going to do is to do this no good propagation directly on the logic program. Of course, if you want, you can first build the knowledge, sorry, build the no goods and then do knowledge, pro, do no good, sorry, propagation on them. But I will do it this other way. Now, what happens is that it's easy to do this, this no good propagation over the using the logic program, but 
uh, only over the completion nodes. For loop nodes, it's really handy to have them pre-calculated before, also because they will not be that many as the completion nodes, at least in the exercises that we're going to do. Hence, what we do now is to uh, calculate these loop nodes, and this is very simple. First, we have to build the, the positive atom descent, um, positive atom dependency graph. So we see that here we have C if A and F if A. So we can just write here C if A and F if A. Then we also have here A if F. So we see that there will be a loop here between A and F. And then we also check this positive, positive body. So we have a link from D to B. And then from A to G. And from E to G. Good, so now we have a look at this. We see that there is only one loop, A and F. Let's mark this with red. This is our unique loop. So we know we only have to care about the relevant loop no goods. And we also have to care, we only have to care about then uh, the loop with A and F. So what is the external support for 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 this loop AF? So this is part of the external support, this rule, because it does not contain the A or the F in the body, but it contains the A in the head. And we also have, so this is not the part of the external support because the F appears there. And then for the F, we have these two rules. This is not part of the external support because the A appears here, but this is part of the external support. So of the set AF, these two rules are the external support and these two are the external bodies. And then we have that the loop no goods for this loop, which is the unique non-trivial loop of the program is that, let me write it a bit more to the right. Let's put it right here, that it cannot be the case that A is true and both external bodies are false. Not B, not E, and the other was this not B, not G. And we also write the same story for the F for true of F. You see these two, this one and this one are the external bodies of the loop A F, hence they appear here. Nice. Then at this point, we can continue with no good propagation. And as I said, we will no good propagate directly looking at the logic program, but you could also build first the no goods and then simply uh, propagate over them. And, and if you know how does this no good propagation work, first we do propagation over the, the, over the completion no goods, and only once there's nothing else to propagate with those completion no goods, we propagate using the loop no goods. So let's go to it. To begin with, I'm going to mark in the program what atoms or bodies have become true or false. And given that we are already at decision level three, I have to do this for the literals that are already assigned. So we have that a is true, and I will mark it like this. Here it's also true, also true. A also appears there, and it is true, and also appears here, and it is true. And then at decision level two, we have that B is false. Hence, this literal becomes true. And also this one and this one. And here this head becomes false. Then given that this head was false, we have the right here that this body must also be false because otherwise B should be true. And I am writing it like this with this X after the body. And if I write a tick, it will mean that the body is true. 
And now we have decided to make the body A, not E, false. This body is this one. Oops, sorry. I, I wrote a tick. So this is false. Then it's our moment to start propagating. Then the first thing we see is this body becomes false and A is true. So for the body to be false, this literal must be false, hence E must be true. Then we can mark here that E must be true. And we have used this no good that tells us, and did you have to, to, to think a bit about it. The no good tells us that it can be the case that E is false and that the body, sorry, and that this body was false and that A was true. And of course, these two appear in our assignment. Hence, we can propagate that E is true. And what else we have? So we, given that we have that this body is false, then we may also propagate that C has to be false because this is the unique rule whose head is C. Hence, C has to be false. And what no good have we used? Again, you have to think maybe the first time you do the exercise, this is a bit, uh, yeah, it takes you a bit of time, but as you practice a bit, you will see this is not complicated. So it can be the case that C is true and that its unique body A not E is false. And again, you see this is a no good and this appeared before in the assignment, hence we can propagate that C is false. Now let's see whether we can use this body to propagate something else. And I think we cannot, right? Because we have already said everything we could about the heads, whose body is this one, and also about the, the, the literals in the, in the body. Nice. Then we propagated, um, we made E true. So the first thing we do is we mark it here in the program. If E is true, then this becomes false. Similarly, this also becomes false. And let's look for other is here. This will become true. And here, this also becomes true. Then let's see what can we propagate once we have this. In this part, if this literal becomes false, the body is also false. Then we can get it here. The body not B, not E becomes false. And for this, we use this no good. That tells us that it can be the case that the body is true and E is also true, and this we had it from here. Good, this is there. Now, here there's nothing else we can, we can derive because we already have that the body is false. Now, let's continue. Here we had that this head was true, hence the body must be true. Then we just add this here, that the body not C is true. And for this, we would use this no good that tells us that it cannot be the case that the body is false, but the head, but the head is true. Right? And this was there. So all good. And then it also appeared here in this body. So now this body becomes true. Hence, we derive that the body AE is true, and for this we use this no good that tells us that it can be the case that the body is false, while both A and E are true. Good, and now let's go quickly to check here whether we have done everything correctly with the E. We settled this to true, this was already false, and then here this body must be true, 
And here the whole body must be true. And this is what we have derived with this. Nice. Then we can say we have used the true of A for no good propagation and I mark it with this symbol. So now let's see what can we derive once we know that C is false. First, let's go to the program to mark it. C is false. Then I mark it there. So there was here. Then this becomes true. And these two also become true because C is false. Now let's see what can we propagate with this. Here, this body, this head is false, so this rule must be false, but we, sorry, this body must be false, but we already have this here, that the body is false. And there are no more rules with C in the head. Now, here we know that this literal is true, but we don't know what's the value of this body because it depends on the value of the F. If F is true, the body will be true, but if it's false, the body will be false. Now, here... We know the body is false and not C is true, then D must be false because otherwise the body would be true. So we add here that D is false. And the no good we use for is, is this one that tells us it cannot be the case that D is true, C is false, and the body D not C is false. Right? Good, then this is what we do with this one to derive that D must be false. I'm doing it a bit slowly because I don't want to I don't want to get lost and this is also the way you should do it. And if this is too easy for you, now you can also scroll forward and see what is the result. It's not that you have to come with me all the way, but I think it's good that you have every single step. Now let's continue. Then this becomes true. Mm, sorry, the the C becomes false, so then this body becomes true, and then now we could propagate true not C, but actually if you look here, we already have it from before. So we have already derived that the body is true given that the head was true. So it doesn't make sense that we add it again here. And in fact, this is not how the algorithm works. You only propagate literals that are not in the current assignment. Good. So then this is for the D. Let's continue. And wait, let me mark it here that, that the, sorry, what I wanted to say is this is the work that we had to do for the C. So we can continue. Here we have derived that the body not B not E is false. So let's go and mark it in the program. Not B not E is false. And it does not occur anywhere else because there's only this body that occurs twice. Then if this body is false, the look look at this reasoning because it's something that you could you could uh, maybe not realize the first time. If this body is false but A is true, then this body must be true, right? Because if this body was also false, then A should be false because these are the two bodies for A. Hence, we will derive that the body F not C is true because it can't be the case that that body is false, that also the body not B not E is false, but that A is true. And this we have here, 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 and there, right? And okay, this we have used that, that this body is false to derive that and nothing else can be done because we already have that this literal is true and this other is false. Hence we can check this and continue to see what can we derive given that this body is true. So first thing, we mark it. This body does not appear anywhere else. And then what could we derive if this is true? 
we could derive that the c is false, but we already have it here, and we could derive that e is true, but we already have it here. Hence, nothing to be done about this body being true. Then let's move to the other. We have that the body AE is true. Let's go and mark it. Mm, where is this? This is here. Then again, this body only occurs here. We already know that the atoms inside are true, so all we can get is to derive that G is true. And this we do it with this no good that tells us that it can be the case that G is false, but the body with A and E is true, and the body we had it here. Nice, and then there's nothing else that we can derive from the fact that the body is true. Now, let's see what happens with the D, given that this is false. Let's go and mark here. If the D is false, then this literally is true. This head is false. This literal here. Okay, so I have my... Sorry, I know sometimes when I just write and I don't use this, this tool um, to point to the places, maybe you don't see what I'm what I'm actually writing, so sorry for that. So what I wanted to say is that with the D, this becomes true, this becomes false, and this becomes false, with the D false. And the D does not appear anywhere else. So let's see whether we can derive something. Now we have added this, so it's clear that this body is true. The body A, not D, is true, because we have the no good that tells us it cannot be the case that the body is false, and A is true, and D is false. And these two were here and there. And then let's see what else we had with the D. Here, this is false. Then this body must be false. And check, this body appears twice. Yeah. Then we can derive that the body not being of G is false. And for this, we use the no good. That tells us that it cannot be the case that the body is true. And the head is false. And this FD comes from there. Now let's see what... Okay, first thing I have to do, I have to unzoom a bit. Because otherwise things will not fit here. I hope this is still readable for you. Okay, let's continue. Now with the D, we only have this here that D is false, and then this body is false, but this is already a bulb where we have that the body D not C is false. It's already here. So then there's nothing else to be done about this D. And we can keep going. Now we have that the body with F and not C is true. So this body is true. And this body doesn't occur anywhere, so we don't have to do to mark anything else. And what can we derive from here? That the F must be true, because otherwise the body cannot be true. Then we derive that F is true. With this no good that tells us it can be the case that F is false. If the body was true and also C was false. And this we have true F not C was here. We have them here, right? So then we propagate that F must be true. And nothing else can be done about this body because we already have that the A is true. Then we can mark it and see what can we derive from the fact that G is true. First, again, let's mark it. G is true. Let's see what does the G appear. So here. Then if G is true, these two are false. And I also have the G here. And those are all the Gs that I see in the program. Right, now let's see what can we derive from this. 
So if G is true, then this body is false and the same this is the same body, right? So this body is false, but we already have the right that it was false from the fact that the head was false here, right? So we don't have to add it again. And then here we have that the G is true, and then the body must be true, but we already have that A, E is true somewhere here. Let me find it. Yes. Nice. So... Yes, nothing has to be done about the G. We can mark it. And now I start becoming suspicious that we have already finished. And um, yeah, because if now we have this body true and this body false, true A not D, and false not B not G, and that the F is true. Then you see, we have all the bodies marked and all the literals in all the rules also marked so we have assigned a value to all to all atoms and to all bodies and still we can check in another way and and see whether the number of liter of atoms that we have assigned and of body that we have assigned correspond to what we have here in the program so let's see how many atoms we have assigned one two three four five six seven and this corresponds to a b c d e f g seven so then we have assigned all the atoms and for the bodies you see clearly nine rules but one is repeated so actually there are eight bodies and we have assigned one two three four five six seven and eight hence we have assigned all the all the bodies and all the atoms and still now you could check whether the whether you have done everything correctly that would be something to do so what we would think now if we were too quick is that we have found an assignment and then we can return an stable model with this with the that corresponds to the assignment of the atoms but all we have done is to propagate using the completion nodes just looking at the completion of the no goods, sorry, of the program, but we have not thought at all about the loops. And we have these two loop no goods here that in fact, they are violated by our current assignment. So we have that the body, this not B not E is false, it's here. And we also have that not B not G is false, right? And we have that F is true, F is true, and A is true. So both are violated. So then we could say both of these are conflict no goods at this point. And yes, so please have a look at this. And always remember, you do first propagation with the completion no goods. You do just propagation looking at the program without caring about the loops but once that's finished you have to go and check for the loop nodes then we have that these two are solutions to the part a both are conflict no goods that can be obtained with no good propagation so now we could continue with any of them so let's go with this one again you could choose which of them you prefer then here we get a conflict with the no good. It can be the case. Not B, not A, F, not B, not G. And one thing to keep in mind. So actually one could say here this became already a conflict once we derived this not B, not G. So we didn't need to derive that F is true. But... What we are doing here is we are following the way that the algorithm works. So the algorithm, what it does is first it does works with the completion no goods and only then it checks for the loop no goods. So then we have to derive that F is true to finish um, propagation with completion no goods and then we go and check loop no goods and we find this. Then as we were doing in previous exercises, we mark here which of the, of the literals in the conflict no good belong to the last decision level. And here we just have, so 
A belongs here and node B, node E below appears here, node B, node G appears here. Hence, these two are the last of the last decision level. Hence, we should um, apply resolution to them to get rid at least of one of them. So let's mark the node code like this. And then the also we mark here this one and this one. Then we start resolving now with respect to this one, and we will get rid then of this of this literal that will be actually replaced by the this other one. So let's write here the result of resolving these two no goods. It's T of A, F, not B, not E, and F D. Right? So we put these two and this one, and these two disappears. And if you if you look at this no good, it makes sense that it cannot be the case that this is true, this is false, and this is false. Because if uh, sorry, this is like this. Because if that is the case, if those three literals here hold, then one of these two no goods will be violated. Because the body not being or G has to be either true or false, or one of them will be violated. Good, let's continue. We mark here what belongs to our decision level. So the F has been assigned here. So we have these two. And we mark, I mark it also here, you see. Now, ne then let's resolve with FD before resolving this, because this comes later here on the on this on the assignment. And then this is the no good we are going to use to resolve. And we have T A F not B not E and then F C and F D not C. And here we have that this belongs to this decision level and false C also there. And D not C belongs here above, right? So only these two belong to this decision level. And we mark here that C is false. And now we continue. The next one that appears in the assignment is this one. Hence, we have to resolve against this no good. And then we have that it cannot be the case that A is true, that this, oh wait, I was doing it. Wrong. This is exactly the literal that we resolve. Th then we have here that C is false and that this other body is false and that E is true. Let me check this quickly again, okay? not that I make a mistake. So we wanted to resolve between these two literals, hence we get this three plus this one, and this is what we have, right? True A, C, F then the body is false and E is true. Good. Then here again, we have to mark what belongs to this decision level, this one, and the E being true. And these two belong to here and there to the previous decision level. To the two previous decision levels, not just to one. Then now we have to resolve. Okay, let me mark here true of A. And now we have to resolve with respect to this one. And I will write it here on the side because I on the other side because I don't have enough space. So this goes there. And I say that it cannot be the case that A is true. That okay, C is what I'm resolving, so I don't care. I don't have to write it. D not C through A and false a not e this is the result of resolving this with this one and again i mark what belongs to this level and it's the t e and the f a not e that appears here then i can mark again here and we have to to now to resolve with T E and I think now we will get we will find finally a confusion no good that only has this literal of this level. 
So let's do it. We resolve. And then we get true A, F, D, not C, F, A, not E. And nothing else. Because if you see here, the true A, we already have it. And the false A, not E, we already have it here. And the... So let's check this again. So if we resolve this with this one, these two belong to both of them. And the true A also. So this is what we obtain. Hence, and now we see there's only one literal of this decision level, which is this actually the, the decision literal F A not him. And these two belong to previous decision levels, the A and the D not C. And then this is the solution to the part B of the exercise. This is a conflict no good that we have derived with this UIP method. Now the part C of the exercise is very simple. So we have to back jump to the um, highest part in the of the assignment where this no good becomes unit and this no good becomes unit once false of D not C has been assigned. So then we can just we just have to jump one level. So basically let, let me draw it like this. We undo this part and here we can derive that A not E becomes true. Because we have this no good that tells us it cannot be the case that A not E is false. If we have that A is true and that D not C is false. I have just rewritten this here in another order. And then this is the solution to the part C. And this concludes the exercise. Now, what I will do, this would be fine, and I have taken this approach of going through with this no good, and I have been using this method that I'm building the no good step by step, you see, until we get to the, to the conflict no good. Now, what I will do is I will also see what happens if we had taken the no good where, where, where we have the literal true of F, and then this path of this derivation path will be a bit different. But now what I will do is instead of using this method, I will use the other method, which is a bit more graphical. So now I clean this and continue. But just to let you know, so far this is, uh, this is enough for the exercise. I'm just going to show you how to do it another way if instead of going through the A, you had gone through the F. But the same, the graphical method that I will use now, you could also use it, of course, with this no good. Hmm? Then we start here with this conflict no good that has these three literals that belong to our decision level. So we start with this TF, that is the one that is closer to the, to the conflict. And then we see that we have derived it using the fact that F not C is true. Then we have a link here. And also using the fact that C is false. Then we have another arrow here. And then we can mark here, there, like here and here. And also say that these are no goods that we have used for the implication. And I also mark the others. Good. Then now let's move on and see this one. What have we used? We have used FD to derive it. Then let's go here and we mark that we have used it. And we underline F of D. And this is the no good that we have used to drive f of d. 
then we are done with this. Let's go with this true F not C. We have used these two. Not F not E appears here. So then we have to link it. We add the arrow. And then TA belongs to a previous decision level, so we mark it here with green. Nice, then we are done with this. We move to FD. And FD we have derived it using FC, which is there. Then we can just add here. Oops, let's use red. We just add this arrow here. And also FD not seen, which belongs to a previous decision literal. Then we mark it with green. And now it's the time for this body being false. And we have used true of E. Then let's add the link here. Then we are good with that. We mark it there. Now it's the moment of this false C that we have used that this other body is false. And then we add the link from here, this implication arrow. And then we, uh, we mark it also here, underlining it. Now it's the moment of T of E. And for this, we have used the fact that this body is false. So again, we have the link here and also the fact that A is true. Good, so what we have built here is what is called the implication graph. We can, we can read it in a way like follows. Using this and this TA, we derive T of E. We imply T of E. Now, from this, we can imply also through F of C. And with F of C, I can imply F of D together with this that was there before. You see, this tells us how the literals imply the others. This is why it's called an implication graph. Now, what is the unique implication point or what are, there could be more than, than one, but in this case, there's only one, a unique implication point, a point in this implication graph from which all the literals in the conflict no good are derived. So for example, this f of d is not an implication is not an implication point because from f of d we get to this one, but we do not get to true of a and to false of not b not e. Also, yes, and let's just say it the unique implication point is that just this body false, just this false a not e, because once this is made false. All these follow and all, okay, let me just say it again. Once this is set, the three literals in the conflict no good are derived. They follow because you can get this. You can get true of F, you can get not B, not G, and you can get not B, not T. And from the others, this is not the case. For example, I'll do one more. From T of E, I managed to get this one and also through here, F not C and, and through, through of F. But let me think a moment. There's one that I, not, I cannot get, but with true of E, like this. Um, let me think a second. Okay, yes, with true of E, I cannot derive true of F, because for true of F, I need that C is false, right? And just with true of E, I don't manage to get it. But if this body is false, then I get true of E and C is false, and I get the whole thing. I hope you understand this. I know the explanation was not the best one, but I, I hope you get the idea. Then all we have to say is this is the f unique implication, one unique implication point. In fact, it is the first one that appears in the graph. So it, yes, let's leave it there. It's the first one. And, <clears throat> and then we know that this will appear in the conflict. No good. F, A, not E. And what also appears are the literals that we have used in all these no goods that do not belong 
to this decision level, like true of A and FD not E. So true A, let me paint it red. True A and F not B not E. Okay, this is the this is it. And then uh, this would be a solution for part B of the exercise. This is a conflict node that we have derived with this method. And now we have to find the assignment, so we have to back jump. Oh, sorry, this is incorrect. I didn't want to add this. I have to add FD not C. Right, you see? It's FD not C and TA. So then we have to back jump to the first decision level where this no good becomes unit and it's at this decision level too because then we have derived that A is true and that this bad is false. This is the same story as, as before when we did it for the for the no good with with true of A. Hence for the part C we erase all this part and we just add here that we can derive that the body A not E is true, and for this we use this conflict no good that we have derived that tells us that it cannot be the case that the body A not E is false, and A is true, and D not C is false. Good, so I think you have understood it. This is all I wanted to tell you about this exercise. Remember, I have done, when you arrive here, you had these two options to decide which was the conflict no good for you, and then you have these two methods of, of finding the, the conflict no good with the first UIP and then to, to, to do the assignment. And also in the, in the solutions, you have another, in the, in the part of these exercise sheets where we have the solution, there's even another different solution that occurs when you no good propagating a different order than this one. So this means that maybe you have a solution that is not any of the ones that I have calculated here, and it's also not one, not the one that appears in the solution, and that's still a solution. So there you have to, to care about it yourself, that you have followed the right, uh, the right uh, paths at every moment. So this was it for the exercise. Thank you for your attention. I hope you have enjoyed it and that you have understood it. And then see you in another video. Ciao!